Meet fashionista Nicole. She studied fashion, she worked in fashion, she has her own vintage clothing store, and she just loves clothes. I've always loved clothes since the time I was a little kid. I love dresses, I love fabric, I love the way it feels on, on my skin, I love expressing myself through fashion. Now meets her husband Mahmoud. As a conservative Egyptian man, clothing is also very important for him but for entirely different reasons. The biggest thing and the strangest thing that we fight about constantly is my clothes. I always ask you to cover your body, because you can cover your body, but you're making like this so tight, can't show like your body so, no? Call me a genius, but something tells me these two might not be a good fit for one another. I mean, there's nothing like an impulsive marriage in a foreign country to a man whose customs, tradition and religion you know nothing about to make for entertaining TV. What could possibly go wrong? He wants me to cover my body. And without thinking, I said, okay, okay. And then he wanted me to cover my hair and I said, okay. It was much different than I thought. Okay, so before I get to Nicole's questionable life choices, let's go back and meet her. So Nicole seems like a sweet, if not slightly naive lady. She grew up in a very small town in Idaho, the town of Council, which as of 2021 has a population of just 908 people. Living in Council was a little boring. I knew there was a lot out there that I didn't have access to. I just wanted more. And her quest for more has seen her bounce around from state to state, job to job, for well over a decade. Now aged 38, she now lives in LA, working as a pizza delivery driver and a clothing reseller. And by her own admission, she's had a bit of a struggle finding her way in life. I lived in several different states and I was just sort of trying to find out who I was. After about a decade of traveling around, I finally settled in LA and went to fashion design school. But sadly, despite her great love of fashion, she soon decided that this too wasn't for her. I hated it. It was awful. I, I guess I just like don't have the personality for it. Now this is all painting a picture of Nicole being an impulsive lady. Perhaps a lady who gives up when things get hard. Maybe someone who gets bored very quickly. But it was her next career that would change her life forever. So I started studying meditation and spirituality. I was on a spiritual singles website and I saw an ad for a soul journey to Egypt. So yet again, Nicole was on a journey to find herself. And I wonder if maybe she was more prone to falling in love due to the overall effect the trip had on her. Because on the very last day of her trip, you'll never guess where she meets Mahmoud. You can almost forgive her for thinking this must be fate. I was shopping for fabric and I wandered into the fabric store. There's this like this super cute boy with like these big brown eyes and these big sexy muscles. I mean, you couldn't make it up, could you? A fabric store. For someone who loves fashion as much as Nicole does, this must have seemed like a Disney fairy tale. But you can't help but wonder whether all of those magical moments made her feel a heightened sense of love. Did she just get swept up in the moment? He asked me if I like Egypt and I said, I love Egypt. I want to stay in Egypt. It's amazing. And he said, you should. You should stay in Egypt and be my wife. Wow, smooth. <laughs> this is a guy who knows how to take advantage of his opportunity. There and then he asks her to marry him. It must have been a fairy tale moment, but <laughs> this is where the story gets a little crazy. Or should I say a lot crazy? Because after a whirlwind 24 hours together, Nicole reluctantly returned home. The following day, I had a flight around 10 o'clock at night, but we spent most of the day together. I thought about just staying there, but I didn't. I was like, no, you gotta go home. And once back at home, the pair continued to message for a whole five days. That was when Mahmoud, again for the second time, asked for Nicole's hand in marriage. Couldn't have been more than five days after I was back in America where he asked me if, if I really would uh, come to Egypt and marry him. And believe it or not, Nicole says yes. I said yes. 
Of course, yeah. Now, keep in mind, Nicole was a fiercely independent lady, bouncing around from state to state for over a decade. She answered to no one, she was reliant on no one. She did as she pleased. I don't even know if I'd ever even actually thought about being a wife before. I've always just been single and independent. But within one week, yeah, literally one week, she flew back to Egypt and married Mahmoud. She may have been independent previously, but she had no idea what was about to come. I married him at the Justice Department. Not long after that, we had like an actual wedding party. I told no one. Now, seeing her in her headscarf on her wedding day should have been a warning to her. It should have given her a clue about the kinds of sacrifices she'd be expected to make. Except Nicole was too swept up in the moment to take notice. I thought that the magic was just gonna be like that always. Living in Egypt? But I was in for a rude awakening. Oh boy, did the magic fade fast. Within just two short months, Nicole had had enough. She was on a plane back to America. It was much different than I thought. I was there for two months. I just needed to go. I needed to get out of there, back to America. Now, perhaps there's an argument to be made that just like her career in fashion, when things get tough, Nicole goes running. But you may have picked up on the fact she mentioned she didn't tell anyone that she got married. Why was that? Was she embarrassed? Or is that just her nature? I've met Nicole probably more than five years. She's so fun, but she's very secretive. Ah, okay. So this is a trait that her friends have noticed about her too. When we meet her two friends who have known her for over five years, it seems odd that they're not sure what's going on with Nicole's marriage. Right now, she's back in LA. Does that mean they're getting divorced? Are they still together? What's happening? I'm glad I got to see you guys before I go to Egypt. What? You're going what? <laughs> Where? <laughs> I'm going to live with Mahmoud in Egypt. But I thought you're separating. So yes. how did you get back together? Because we, Wait, yeah, we haven't this, even this, heard this anything about that. Before. I didn't realize I didn't tell you. Nicole just doesn't realize she hasn't told her friends. And then she randomly drops on them that she's moving back to Egypt to try again with her husband. But with one friend thinking that Nicole and Mahmoud were separating and the other friend asking why they decided to get back together, it really shows that Nicole doesn't really share what's going on in her personal life. Or perhaps she doesn't have any close friends to talk to. We were married for about 11 months when I told Mahmoud that I wanted a divorce. I canceled Mahmoud's visa application and I blocked him. Okay, so now I'm very confused. 11 months into the marriage, she canceled the visa application and told him they were going to get divorced. Yet here they are now with her telling her friends she's going back to Egypt. So what's changed? What caused her to threaten divorce in the first place? Well, while Nicole's not exactly forthcoming with the information, bit by bit, we start to learn that the main issue was the culture difference. Within a week, I realized how different it is to live in Egypt than it is to visit. I don't drive, I don't speak the language. I was just really struggling. And beyond just the driving and the language, Nicole also shares some of the other ways she's been expected to change, the sacrifices she's been expected to make. He wants me to cover my body. And without thinking, I said, okay, okay. And then he wanted me to cover my hair and I said, okay. In addition to this, she also reveals she's not allowed any physical contact with any man, not so much as a touch or a handshake. And of course, she also can't drink alcohol, which she's doing right now with her friends. If her husband were to see this, he wouldn't be happy. In fact, he's doing everything he can to change Nicole. He was just, he only wanted to be married to somebody who lives up to his standards of like who a wife should be. And so he set forth in changing everything about me. He set forth trying to change everything about me. Those are very worrying words. I don't know why she'd want to go back to a man who wants to change everything about her, but that is indeed what she's about to do. She's about to go back to Egypt. I feel like he should be open to like receiving this, you know, you just being yourself. I feel the same way. The only difference is, this time, she's going in eyes wide open. She knows what to expect. I have concerns, but this time I know what I'm headed into. 
I won't have as much culture shock. We both just really want to be together. I just missed him like crazy. It was awful being away from him, yeah. She sounds quite naive, doesn't she? She loves him and she wants it to work, but it sounds like she's following her heart and totally ignoring her head. If she's not willing to abide by the Islamic way of life, which by the sounds of things seems quite unlikely, then I don't know how she expects the outcome to be different this time around. How are you gonna do this, Nicole? How? Like, I mean, I don't know. It's, uh, it's not gonna be easy, that's for sure. And I have like a whole host of concerns myself. Now, this narrative becomes even more obvious later on in this episode, when Nicole and Mahmoud jump on a video call. And pretty much the first thing that Nicole wants to discuss is what she can wear. We need to make sure that I know what the expectations are because I remember you saying you just need to cover your body. That was that was what you told me. I thought that was the rule. But it turns out that she's understood wrong. That's not the rule. At least that's not what Mahmoud expects from her. I always ask you to cover your body because you can cover your body, but you're making like this so tight, can't show like your body so, no? So now you're saying like tight is an issue. Yeah, so much for going in eyes wide open this time around, Nicole. Someone tell her she's going to an Islamic country. I don't know what she's expecting. In fact, it turns out Mahmoud was actually very clear with her from the very beginning. It's just that she chose to ignore him. She thought she'd have some wiggle room. This is what I talked about that before we married. You see, before they got married, Mahmoud pointed out the types of dresses that he deemed acceptable or not acceptable. For example, he pointed to a lady walking on the street with a shorter dress and said, And he says, you know, you're never going to be able to wear that style. And then pointed to a lady who was much more covered and told Nicole, He sees a girl who's wearing a much longer skirt and totally like buttoned up. And he says that this is beautiful and this is what you will wear. She was told this before they got married. She chose to ignore this partly because she was naive and partly because she felt there might be some flexibility. The rules might not be set in stone. I said yes because I thought there would be some like wiggle room, but there is none. Like so there is, it's completely like you very didn't rigid. Be serious? No, I didn't. Well, hate to say it, Nicole, but you should have done. You should have taken him seriously. Heck, you should have done your own research before marrying a man you barely knew. You should have taken steps to understand the culture, the religion of the country that you were about to move to. Yeah, I know. I didn't think very hard about it and I really regret that. But what makes this even worse is that she's about to make the same mistake again. And yet again, Mahmoud is being very clear with her. There is no wiggle room. About, about clothes, you know, nothing going to change about that. I can't change my mind about that. Never experienced such a challenging situation ever. Like all of the, the problems that have existed between us are still there. Watching this, it's clear to see just how much Nicole loves Mahmoud. This is truly painful for her, but there is no discussion to be had. For Mahmoud, this is his religion. He's not trying to trick Nicole. He's not luring her over to Egypt on false pretenses, pulling a bait and switch on her. He's told her what he expects, and now it's up to Nicole. She needs to decide if she's ready to sacrifice the fashionista part of her identity that seems to be a very, very big part of her life. If she can, well, maybe their relationship might work. But if she can't, then she's going to have to sacrifice her relationship. She can't have both. It's one or the other. Mahmoud has drawn his line in the sand. And if she's coming back to Egypt, he expects her to obey his wishes. I just really have a hard time believing that she's going to be able to. We're just going to have to keep uh, thinking about this and uh, how to kind of like manage the fights a little better so they don't uh, get too out of hand. 